Welcome back everyone to this week's episode of the Bearded Boomer Learning Tarkov and this week we're going to be talking about a topic that probably is overlooked by a lot of new players. We're going to be talking about the hideout and we're going to try to look into how can the hideout make certain things in Tarkov easier on us, what can the hideout do for us and how can the hideout actually maybe even help out in making some rubles. Many people choose not to bother with the hideout because the rest of the game is already complex enough, but you are missing out if you are not using your hideout, especially in patch 12.12 .12, where some things have been taken off the flea market, you are going to need to be using your hideout to have access to certain things like certain types of very good ammo and other things as well. Also, the hideout can be used to make quite a nice amount of rubles for you, and it also gives you access to certain quest items that can be hard to find. And with this video, I hope to add some clarity to what and how you should be using your hideout. I also stream on Twitch, so if you want to come say hi or if you want to come ask any of your questions live, feel free to do so. My links will be down below the video. And, um, well, before we jump into the video, let's do this whole YouTube thing. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below, and I promise you will win the lottery this week. Now, that's about enough intro, let's just dive bomb right into the video. Now, let's look at this step by step. When you first set foot in your hideout, the general plan is going to be that we unlock everything that's available to us at some point, but let's take a look at which things first, okay? The first thing I would actually recommend you to unlock to be able to start using is going to be your med station. Uh, the med station is pretty easy to unlock. It requires you to have 50k rubles. It needs you to find one syringe, one meds, and two of these bandages. That's not too hard to get. You'll find those pretty easily in your first couple of raids. But keep these couple of items in mind so that you make sure that you pick them up while you are playing those raids. Uh, and then you just start crafting that. Going to take a couple of hours. Uh, and it will be available. Now, the reason that I tell you to make this med station first is because it will allow you to craft Salewa kits, and those Salewa kits are going to be needed for the early therapist quests that you will be getting. You'll need to find three of them in raid or craft them in your hideout, so this is an easy way to go about that if you're having trouble finding them in game. Now, before, however, we'll be able to start crafting them on a med station, to be able to craft something in your hideout, the power is going to have to be on. You're going to need a generator. Well, let's take a look. Hmm, there's no generator icon here. So what we can do is we can look down here in this list. And we see generator. We click on generator and it's going to tell us what we need. We're going to have to have security at level one. We're going to need a spark plug and we're going to need 100k rubles. So we click on security. There we go. What do we need for security? 20k rubles and one measuring tape. So, guys, keep again, keep these items in mind when you're doing your early raids. These are things that you, you'll eventually stop picking up because they're not worth too much. But this early in your progression, they're going to be super worth it for you. So make sure early on in a raid, you pick up a measuring tape. You come here, you just construct your security and you'll be on your way to constructing your generator. Then get your generator going get your med station going and you can start crafting your Salewa kits. So your generator is going to have to be on for you to be able to start the craft. Now, this is important. I said start the craft. If you're running low on fuel and you do not have the possibility to pick up new fuel, what you can do, for example, if you want to craft one of those Salewa kits is you can turn on your generator, you can start your craft and you can turn your generator off again. What this will do is the craft will keep going, but it will take a lot longer than if you were to leave the power on. But early on in the game, when it's hard for you to get fuel, this is a pretty decent thing to do because it doesn't matter that you need to wait a little bit longer as long as you get the item in the end. And the cool thing about everything that you craft in your hideout is that everything crafted there is counted as found in raid. Remember this, because this is going to make several things down the line when you get more difficult quests or you need to find rarer items for quests, your hideout can help you out there. For example, at some point you might need, let's say, a VPX module or you need a Ledex and you cannot find it for the life of you because these items are bloody rare. Look at your hideout. Take a look there. Can I craft it somewhere? Maybe I can. It might be expensive and it might take a little bit of time, but if you're not finding the item and that is keeping your progression stuck, 
you might as well just craft it in your hideout and be done with it, right? And then after this, I would recommend that you unlock your workbench. Uh, unlocking the workbench will require two screw nuts, two bolts, and one Leatherman multi-tool. And this M Leatherman multi-tool you can just buy off of mechanic level one. The nuts and bolts are very commonly found by, again, looting toolboxes. This is why I say it's very important to loot toolboxes. Toolboxes are very good for value, uh, very good for finding things that you need for your hideout. So just loot all of them. Unlocking your workbench is going to give you access to gun modification and is going to enable to save presets for your guns as well, which is a very nice quality of life thing to have in Escape from Tarkov. And this is one of the reasons that I'm telling you to craft this second. Um, another huge thing, early on, you're gonna get a quest that requires you to um, hand in some gas analyzers and gas analyzers can be a pain to find. There are a couple of good guides out there that will tell you locations where you can pretty easily find them, but the problem is a lot of them are in very contested areas and are going to be pretty dangerous for you to get. So if you're failing time and time again and you're getting frustrated and you don't want to go to those places again, look at your workbench. You are able to craft a gas analyzer in there as well. So there you go. That's an alternative solution. Now, we also need to talk about the elephant in the room and the slightly more painful part of the hideout. And the reason for that is the existence of the Edge of Darkness pre-order package. Uh, when you buy the game with the Edge of Darkness pre-order package, you get a max level stash from the start. This is something that is not available to other players and other players will have to progress through the, the game and the hideout to be able to get to the same amount of stash base as other players. On a standard account, you will start with a level one stash and getting to a level two and a level three and then a level four stash base, the level four being the equivalent of what you get when you just start with Edge of Darkness, um, is going to be pretty rough because it is very pricey. Because if we take a look here and we go to stash, we can see we have the smallest stash base right now. It's 10 rows by 28. And if we want to upgrade that to level two, this is what we will need. This is a hefty investment early on, especially as a newer player, getting to 2.5 rubles to just blow them up again, needing 10 packs of these screws, needing five packs of nails, a hand drill, and then another four of these things. Before level 15, it's going to be pretty hard to find all these things and grind up enough money to be able to just do this thing. So yeah, progression up until the point where you're at level 15 and you unlock the flea market for your stash is going to be rough. And that is just not considering the actual price of all the things, like all of the money that you're going to have to be spending because you're gonna be spending a big smack of money again when you're going to level three and then another huge smack of cash when you're going to level four. So you basically have a choice here. You either get to spend a ridiculous amount of money in real life or you get to spend a ridiculous amount of money and grinding and time in the game to be able to pick up the maximum stash it is what it is i'll tell you how i went about doing this i personally started playing escape from tarkov with a standard account and then gradually upgraded my way through the different packages until I was at the point that I had an Edge of Darkness account. And the, the reason for that is because I felt this is a game that I am going to be spending hundreds and hundreds of hours on, if not thousands and thousands of hours. Um, and I just decided, yo, the quality of life upgrade that this Edge of Darkness account is giving me is worth it. If you're new to the game, I do not recommend doing this. Start with a standard account. Start with a standard account and see whether you like the game. And if you like the game, you can still make a decision to upgrade your package and eventually maybe get to that Edge of Darkness account. But I would strongly recommend doing it this way because Escape from Tarkov will always be an acquired taste. Don't just jump in with EOD, try it out, dip your toes in, and then if you like it and you know that you'll be spending plenty of hours on it, that's when you upgrade to the Edge of Darkness account. All right, now that we have that painful little thing out of the way, let's talk about what we do after we unlock our workbench and our med station. After unlocking both of those, gradually start working on unlocking everything else. All the other level one things, just make sure that you unlock them uh, because you're either going to have use from them directly 
or they will have a use down the line because you need them to be able to upgrade something else, etc., etc. So basically unlock all of the basic stations that you have at level one. And after finishing all these things on level one, I would gradually start upgrading things to level two, because the thing is your workbenches will progressively give you better crafts and stuff like that, and will also provide uh, rarer crafts that you need for some quests. For example, once you get your med station to level three, you'll be able to craft the letics there. Now, my strategy and the way I usually go about this with my hideout is before level 15, and level 15 is relevant here because that is the level where you unlock the flea market. Before level 15, I work on getting the bare minimum going. So that means I get my generator, I get my workbench, I get my med station, and I unlock whatever I find the stuff that I need for it. If I find the stuff to make my lavatory, I will make my lavatory. If I find the stuff I need to craft uh, the nutrition station, I'll craft the nutrition station, etc, etc. But I mainly go for those minimum requirements before level 15. And then once I hit level 15, that's when I start investing into the hideout. The reason for that is it becomes a lot more easy because you can just buy all of the things you need to upgrade workbenches or to make workbenches straight from the flea market because anything that you need to make things in a hideout does not need to be found in raid and this is very important. Below the video I will also leave links to two very handy wiki pages one of which will be a flow chart for hideout progression and the other one is going to be a list with all of the available crafts on all of your stations on each level so that'll be very handy for you to, to look into to see what you need and what you need to progress i would strongly recommend doing your own research into what you need from your hideout and that way deciding what you're going to be prioritizing in building and spending your money on because that can be very different for people uh, throughout their wipe. You, you never know when you find those rare items so that you're not going to need to craft them in the hideout. For example, if you're on your third raid and you accidentally find the letics, well, well done. You're not going to have to craft that in your hideout. So that is why I, I tell you to do your own research and make sure that you're prioritizing for you because there is no one size fits all when it comes to this. Now that we've talked about what to do in the early game with your hideout and progressing into the mid game with your hideout, let's also look at how we get to the end game. Let me show you what I'm doing with my hideout um, while I'm getting close to the end game. I'm getting close to max traders, so I'm getting there. And let me show you what I've done with my hideout. I have basically built everything in the hideout apart from this one thing, the solar power. This is one thing that I decided not to build and the reason for it is it is super freaking expensive. I mean, let's just look at it. This is 75k euros. That's a lot of rubles. Um, 10 of these things. Let's see how, how much they go right now. They're still almost at 700k. So. That's 7 million, these military cables, I don't know how much these are, that's another million altogether. Uh, the 75k euros, I don't even know how much a euro goes. It's 144 rubles times 75,000, so yeah, many, 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 many rubles. And then there's this thing, that's another million probably that you're spending. So, and all it does is it decreases your fuel consumption by 50%. Now, don't get me wrong. If this were working correctly, this would be pretty decent and it might actually be worth the investment if if you build it early enough to make sure that you're getting your money's worth out of it. But the way it's looking right now with power filters being this expensive and the amount of um, euros on top of it, I just don't feel like it's worth it. On top of that, there have been reports that this thing is not working properly. And when you're offline, it is not applying the minus 50% fuel consumption. So for that reason, I just decided I'm not going for it. Now you can also see that I don't have uh, Peacekeeper at level four yet, so I can't just build it just now, but I'm also not going to because of the fact that it is so freaking expensive and the fact that on top of that, it doesn't seem to be working properly while offline. The only other thing that I haven't maxed out in my hideout right now is my Bitcoin farm. Reason for that is I'm still working on it, basically. So what I've done is I've set up my Bitcoin farm at level one and I've put 10 GPUs in it and they're producing Bitcoin. So this is basically just printing money for me because whenever I get a Bitcoin, I can sell that to therapist for the current value 
or I can decide that I want to sit on it and see if the Bitcoin goes up. Because fun fact, and you may not notice, but the price of a Bitcoin in Escape from Tarkov is actually linked to the price of an actual real life Bitcoin. So if you're keeping an eye on the Bitcoin market and you see it going on a rise, make sure to start selling your in-game Bitcoins before it starts crashing again to maximize your profit. Or, you know, if you don't really care too much about it, just sell it. It's always good money. There you go. Now, my plan this wipe will be that I will be getting my Bitcoin to level two. And what I'm going to need for that is still quite a juicy investment. Now, these these circuit boards, that's not a big cost. The filter's not a big cost. Uh, nor near are these things. But this, of course, is still about 1.6 to 1.7 million that we're going to have to invest. And then on top of that, I'm going to have to buy 15 more GPUs to fill all of those slots. And GPUs right now are still about half a million rubles. So that is quite a hefty um, investment still to be made. But that is my plan. I am not going to upgrade my Bitcoin farm to level three. Reason for it being that is another really hefty uh, investment and on top of that that's another 25 gpus and i don't see myself getting that investment back out of it so i am going to cap it at level two and just enjoy printing money from there on out the rest i just have everything at max i have all of my workbenches at max and i'm trying to use them to make some money now big money makers in your hideout are going to be for example your water collector right here because all it takes is just you, you just need to slam a water filter in to start producing super water and what you can do with that super water is you can then go to your booze generator use your super water to make moonshines but if you're doing this to make money I'm currently not doing this to make money I am saving up my moonshines to be able to barter for another thick case but if you're selling it because you need money um, be sure to check the prices of everything because sugar right now is pretty heftily priced. You can see sugar's at 60k. Well, actually almost 70k right now. Uh, and then super water is around 100. So that means to make one moonshine, you're spending about 240k to make one. And let's take a look at the price of the moonshine. Well, it's about 280 so you're making a marginal marginal profit by making moonshines but keep an eye on these prices because it may just be more beneficial to just sell your sugar and your sh super water and you might at some point be making more money than when you're making it into moonshine and selling the moonshine however if you are using the moonshine to either gamble on your scaf case or you're um, saving it for a thick case by all means, go ahead. I'm just saying, if you're looking to maximize your profit, keep an eye on the flea market prizes. Other crafts that I'm using quite a lot this uh, wipe are going to be the Propital craft in the med station because that is a pretty profitable one. I'm not actually using this one for profit. I'm not using it for selling. I am just using it to um, make Propitals for myself because I think it's nice and easy. And I, I'm not a big fan of having to be on the flea market for too long. So I just tend to craft them myself because all of these things are very easy to find. Just keep your meds in a scaf case. Keep your ibuprofens around. You'll find a golden star from time to time and you can just pop seven propotols nice and easy. I haven't been using my nutrition station all too much because the prices are not really great. One of the crafts that you could be doing is the Aonka into sugars because you can use the sugars to then make your moonshines. Um, but the thing is, this is mainly interesting when the prices for Ayanka are lower than this because right now you're paying 32 to 35k for an Ayanka bar and we know that if we buy a sugar we just checked that earlier that it's going to be around 70k now let's say that the the Ayanka bar is around 20 to 25 it starts to get more interesting because there's a bigger profit margin there you know now the lavatory is another one of these um, crafting stations where you can make a nice profit and you can actually make a nice profit off like stupid small crafts. For example, the one I just did, um, you buy four of these bags, of these tactical sling bags, you buy them from uh, Ragman, which will end up being like 8k rubles. That will then be made into one Cordura. And if you look up a Cordura, that one sells for about 19k. So that's a nice straight up profit. And the thing is, it's nice to just get those little fast crafts in between because your energy is on anyway because your workbench is working, your water collector is working, your boost generator is working. A lot of things are working in your hideout. 
So might as well just use the lavatory just for a quick couple of crafts and making a quick buck. Another thing I do with my lavatory here is I make my own grenade cases. So because you're going to be using you're going to be getting these empty metal fuel tanks anyway if you're using your hideout and these are all things that you're going to find in raid so often and the same thing basically goes for uh, magazine cases or potentially even a junk case one thing with crafting in the hideout that i definitely want to make you guys aware of before you just randomly start crafting in your hideout make sure that the craft is actually profitable like for example you can spend nine and a half hours using four of these filters a pair of these scissors and a set of paper to craft a water filter but is it actually worth it let's take a look so let's see we need four of these which is going to cost us let's say it's going to cost us 48k in uh, gas mask filters then a pair of metal scissors let's just look it up this way that's another 20k so we're at 40 48 which is 68 already and then we need to look up the paper where is the craft so we're looking at paper that's another and we we realize that we are buying 82k worth of stuff to make a water filter i'm pretty sure water filter is not going to be 82k but let's check it just to be sure boom it's only half of that so before you craft and it's not because it's available in your hideout that it's a good craft check your flea market prices once you get it there we have it guys that is it for the hideout guide i hope this makes the hideout a little bit less of an enigma and i hope it makes you able to start using it to your advantage to either get you through some of these quests or have you crafting your own strong ammo stuff like that as always guys if you have any questions leave them down below in the comments i'll be happy to answer them there i'll be even happier if you swing by the twitch channel to come say hi and ask your questions over there so i can answer them live like always guys if you want to help the channel grow please feel free to hit that like button hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below and i will see you guys in the next video Bye bye <laughs>